Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to create a multiple linear regression model in R. Now, multiple linear regression allows us to, um, it's a simple form of machine learning and it allows us to make predictions for a dependent variable based on two or more independent variables. So before we start, let's take a look at a data set here to help us understand what it is that we're trying to do in multiple linear regression. I'm going to use data from the Datarium package. So if you haven't installed this uh, package already, uh, do so by uh, going to the Packages tab in RStudio, click on Install and type in Datarium uh, in the packages and that will install for you. Um, I've done this already, so I'm not going to do it again. So I'm going to load the Datarium, Datarium package into R and the data set that I'm going to use uh, within this package is called the marketing data set. So I'm going to use the head function to display the first six lines in our data set here. And there are 200 records in this data set, so I'm just showing the first six. And we can see here that we've got four variables. So we've got YouTube, Facebook, newspaper, and then sales. So if I take a look at uh, help and type in marketing to see what this data set's all about, it tells us that they, each uh, line, each record in the data set, uh, tells us how much money is spent in dollars on YouTube, uh, on Facebook advertising, on newspaper advertising, and what the associated sales are with those three. So we repeated this, this experiment 200 times, and what I'd like to be able to do is, can I predict what sales I would achieve uh, for a particular spend on YouTube, Facebook, and newspaper? So if I wanted to, for example, say, well, how much, how many sales would I get if I spent $100 on YouTube, uh, $50 on Facebook, and $70 on newspaper, what would the sales figure be? So this is a simple form of um, um, machine learning, and that we're going to use the multiple linear regression model to do this. Now, before we move into create the model, we always need in multiple linear regression to check for multicollinearity, which is uh, if there are any um, high correlations between the dependent variables, then uh, we need to uh, remove one or more of those depend independent variables. So in my data set here, YouTube, Facebook and newspaper, those three sets of data, these are my independent variables that I'm going to use to predict uh, sales, which is our dependent variable. So let's run the car, use the correlation um, coefficient function to calculate the Pearson correlation uh, uh, coefficient for each of our variables in the data set. So let's run line 11 here. We get a nice neat um, correlation matrix and uh, it shows us we want to be able to compare each of the independent variables. So let's take, start out with YouTube. We can see that its correlation coefficient with Facebook is 0 0.54, which is tiny. It's almost zero, which indicates that there's no correlation between uh, the spend on YouTube and Facebook. And equally, we can also see that the correlation coefficient for YouTube and newspaper is also extremely low, 0 0.05. The final one we want to take a look at is the correlation between Facebook and newspaper. And that is 0.35, uh, and that's still quite low for a correlation coefficient, indicating only a minor correlation between Facebook and newspaper. So we don't have any high correlations between the three independent variables. Therefore, we're good to go. There's no multicollinearity in our data set, and there's no need for us to remove any of our independent variables. Now, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a sales model. So I want to be able to predict sales. I'm going to call my vector sales model. And use then the LM function, the linear model function, uh, to create the model. So again, if you have not used the linear model function, look it up in the help section here, and it will give you some information, description, usage, how to use the parameters, and of course, some examples uh, as well. So there's essentially, for the purposes of this video, three elements that I want to install to insert into the LM function. So the first thing is we indicate, well, what is the um, independent, what is the dependent variable? So that's sales. And then I use the tilde symbol to regress the three independent variables on sales. So I'm going to type in YouTube. I'll be very careful here because uh, the spelling must match the variable names uh, that you see below. So YouTube, and use the plus sign then to add in the Facebook variable. And the plus sign again to add in the newspaper variable. That's the second element of our linear model function. The last part then is we must tell uh, the function where the data are. So then I'm going to put that in as data is equal to uh, marketing. So that's the name of the data set that we are using here. So quick reminder, we are creating a sales model, which I'm calling say, sales model here, uh, using the LM function. There's three elements to that. The first is indicate well, what, what variable you're trying to predict. So that's sales. Then indicate the three 
in our case, we've got three independent variables, so I'm putting all three in. And finally, just to make sure the linear model uh, function is using the correct data set, we indicate using the data parameter what the data set is, and of course, it's the marketing data set. So let's run this piece of code and check for errors. So we have no errors, and we can see in the global environment that our sales model is created. And we need to use the summary function to display the contents of the model. So on line 14 here, I'm going to run this summary of sales model. And we get quite a bit of output here in the bottom. So let me um, um, show you what that output is first of all. So this is the code, the summary of our sales model. Uh, we get a replica of the model that we've just created. So that's the same as in the code that we have just written. And the first thing we need to look at here is down at the very, very bottom of the model, what is the um, F statistic? So we've got an F statistic, uh, which tells us uh, it's quite a high statistic, 570.3. But what we're really after here is the p-value to determine if uh, the significance level here, and we can see that the p-value is less than 2.2 to the power of 10, 10 to the power of minus 16. So that's a tiny, tiny p-value, which indicates to us uh, that at least one of our three predictor uh, variables is significantly related to the sales variable. So it looks like we've got a good model here with it with extremely low p value. We also down here look also look at the multiple r squared value. In this case here, we can see that it's uh, 0.8972. That's um, a good value. That indicates that 89.7% of the variation can be explained by our model. So that's a really, really good figure. And finally, then we look at the coefficient section here um, to look at each of the variables in turn um, is, is tested. And we can see uh, that we have p-values for our intercept, YouTube and Facebook variables, uh, in, indicating that these are uh, tiny p-values, indicating that these are highly significant. However, the newspaper variable here, we can see the p-value is 0.86, and uh, that is a not a significant value. Therefore, we can conclude here that the newspaper variable is not contributing anything at all or very very little to the model. We can also see that this figure here of minus 0 0.001 indicates that it's contributing a tiny tiny amount to the model. So in a moment when we go and write out this model, this estimate column here, it's these figures here that we are interested in in creating our model. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write out this model, write it out in, in a comment here. So my model is going to be that sales, the formula that I'm going to use is equal to uh, 3.5. So where did I get 3.5? So let me move this back over here. So the 3.5 comes from our coefficient. So that's 3.5, that line there. So the value estimate there for our model, 3.526 or 3.527 rounded. Um, so that's uh, the first piece there. Um, so sorry, that should be an equal sign there and the plus, apologies for that. Okay, so it's equal to 3.527 and then plus, now I don't need to put the next bit in brackets. I made a mistake again there, so I'll go back and put in a plus sign. Um, I don't need, don't need to put the next section in brackets, but I'm just doing it for illustrating purposes. Uh, we can see here now that we want to put in our three variables. So the next one is the value of 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.04, uh, 6 rounded. So that's 0. 046 rounded multiplied by the value that we want to use to predict. So if I wanted to say, for example, uh, you know, what sales would be if I spent $100 on YouTube, I would, I would put 100 in here. So I do that and um, plus, and again, I'm going to use brackets just for to illustration purposes here. The next figure here is the Facebook value. So we can see here that the, co the estimate is 0 0.189 rounded. So this is going to be 0 0.189 rounded multiplied by the Facebook value. So if I wanted to, for example, uh, you know, what would the, the uh, sales be if the Facebook spend was $50? And finally, another plus sign here for the newspaper. Again, I'm putting it in brackets just for illustration purposes here. We can see that it's a tiny figure of minus 0 0.001. So that means I need to change that plus sign to a minus, minus 0. 0 0.001 so times newspaper so we can so whatever our spend is on newspaper we know we're going to get a very very small uh, contribution to the model so that figure there uh, this this here allows us to create our multiple linear regression model so now if i um, want to predict 
um, sales for $100 for YouTube spend, $50 on uh, Facebook spend, and say $70 on a newspaper spend, then I can use that to predict um, the number of amount of sales that I will get. One of the things we can have done here is that we know that um, the newspaper is contributing very, very little to the model, so it, it may well be appropriate to remove it, uh, just to save some um, and time and effort on, on creating your model. So you just simply delete that model there, okay, and run it again, run the summary again, and we get our output here. So we can see that we're still getting the same things as before. Major difference is that the line for newspaper in the coefficients table has been removed. We still have a tiny p-value indicating our model is good. Uh, we also have uh, the same, the uh, multiple r squared value has not changed. It's still 89.72 of the variation can be explained by our model. So whether we leave newspaper in or out doesn't really seem to matter in this case here. So that's how you create a multiple linear regression model in R. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.